when it comes to weight loss, staying properly hydrated is essential. While water remains the champion beverage, what happens when we crave something sweet like a can of soda? You want a can of soda pop? As calorie conscious warriors on our weight loss journey, we may turn to the diet version. But can drinking diet soda truly contribute to weight loss or will it derail our progress? Diet soda doesn't give you diarrhea. Let's delve into the science to uncover the truth. I make learning fun, incredibly fun. Hello, my dears, and welcome. I'm Marina, a registered dietitian, here to support every weight loss warrior because I've been through the struggles myself. Today, we are tackling the topic of diet soda and its role in our weight loss journeys. With so much conflicting information out there, we'll examine the scientific evidence to see if we can enjoy diet soda and maybe even pop a can together by the end. First, let's look at the difference between diet soda and a regular soda. But just to clarify the vocabulary. Soda is a commonly used term referring to carbonated sugary sweetened beverages, also known as soft drinks, pop or fizzy drinks, all of which contain added sugar. Diet soda or diet drink encompasses low or zero calorie sweetened beverages with sugar substitutes such as non-nutritive or non-sugar sweeteners, artificial sweeteners and low energy sweeteners. The main difference between the regular and diet soda lies in their ingredients and calorie content. Regular soda is typically sweetened with high amounts of sugar or high fructose corn syrup, contributing to its high calorie content. A can of regular soda contains around 37 grams of sugar, approximately 9 teaspoons and roughly 150 calories. Sugar sweetened beverages stand as a primary source of calories derived from added sugar in the diets of adults and children in the United States. The sugar content adds extra calories to the diet, increasing total energy intake without providing nutritional value or satiety for most people. Moreover, many people fail to compensate for the calories from these beverages, often forgetting that they ingested energy through their drink. Public health experts are significantly concerned about sugar-sweetened beverage consumption due to its significant contribution to overall added or free sugar intake as established association exists between consuming those beverages and the increased risk of obesity and non-communable diseases. Several systematic reviews have reported positive association between the intake of sugar-sweetened beverages and weight gain or the risk of overweight and obesity among both children and adults. In addition to weight gain, excessive consumption of added sugars, especially from sugary drinks, raises the risk of heart disease, high blood pressure, type 2 diabetes and tooth decay. Therefore, recommendations to reduce the consumption of sugar-sweetened beverages are strongly supported by available science. In contrast, diet soda is sweetened with artificial or non-nutritive or non-sugar sweeteners like aspartame, saccharine or sucralose, which provide the sweet taste but have zero to very few calories. A typical can of diet soda contains less than 5 calories and no sugar, making it a popular choice for those looking to reduce their calorie intake. Die calories, die! However, it has zero nutritional value, offering no vitamins, minerals or fiber. But despite this, diet soda can help satisfy cravings for something sweet without adding significant calories to your diet, making it a useful tool for some people in managing their weight. Of course, water will always be a superior drink to have, but what if we are used to drinking regular soda and it's hard to make that switch immediately? What if we want to follow the number one weight loss tip of not drinking our calories? Diet soda would seem like a good solution. Simple as that, right? 
So you agree? Well, not really, as leading health and nutrition authorities can seem to find middle ground on the debate about diet soda. Maybe they need the money. Let's see what they have to say. Dietary guidelines worldwide generally recommend water, unsweetened tea and low-fat milk as preferred drinks, emphasizing the reduction of sugar-sweetened beverages. However, most guidelines do not specifically address the consumption of diet soda. Let's explore the perspective of some prominent health and nutrition authorities. The American Heart Association advises limiting added sugars to no more than 100 to 150 calories per day and suggests that low and no calorie beverages like water and diet drinks are better choices than sugary drinks. Similarly, European food-based dietary guidelines recommend limiting sugar consumptions from foods and beverages, with several of them suggesting that low-sugar or sugar-free alternatives can be appropriate choices. The Diabetes and Nutrition Study Group of the European Association for the Study of Diabetes advises against sugar-sweetened beverages, but supports replacing them with non-sugar-sweetened beverages, such as diet soda. They note that non-sugar-sweetened beverages, when replacing sugar-sweetened ones, reduce body weight and cardiometabolic risk factors in people with or at risk for diabetes. This replacement has been associated with reductions in obesity and cardiovascular risk factors similar to those seen in water. The German Nutrition Society also recommends drinking water or mineral water and sugar-free teas as the best alternatives to sugar-sweetened beverages. They emphasize reducing sugar-sweetened beverage consumptions by promoting sugar-free, energy-free or low-energy alternatives. So far, so good, right? Well, knock-knock. Who's here? Mr. President, Dr. Fauci is online too. The Nutrition and Food Safety Department of the World Health Organization recently issued a guideline on non-sugar sweeteners highlighting conflicting evidence. While randomized control trials showed reduction in adiposity outcomes, prospective cohort studies linked non-sugar sweeteners with increased adiposity and chronic disease risk. Despite the conflicting results between study types, the WHO's recommendations remain clear. Non-sugar sweeteners should not be used as a means of achieving weight control or reducing the risk of non-communable diseases. And now we question everything we heard so far. Nothing in my life makes sense anymore. But we are not alone. Dr. Khan and colleagues in their study published in the European Journal of Clinical Nutrition question WHO's guidelines urging reconsideration. They state that even systematic reviews and meta-analysis by WHO showed improvement in body weight and reduced sugar and energy intake with using non-sugar sweeteners. The World Health Organization, however, ignored evidence from randomized control trials in favor of cohort studies, which are prone to bias and can show associations, but not causation. Put simply, cohort studies observe what people do or drink without controlling other variables, while randomized control trials specifically study the effectiveness of an intervention like drinking or not drinking diet soda. The truth is that many overweight people are constantly trying to lose weight and may opt for diet soda. Time to lose some weight, dearie. In cohort studies, this translates to overweight people drink diet soda, they have a weight problem because of it. It's not because of the soda. But that logic is flawed as obesity is multifactorial disease that cannot be attributed to one food or drink item. People often have multiple behaviors that affect outcomes. Researchers conclude that the WHO ignored trial data and cohort studies with methods that reduce bias 
all supporting the use of non-sugar sweeteners in clinical and public health strategies for reducing caloric intake and achieving short and long-term weight loss benefits. Now, that's quite a conundrum. Confusing dance break! Especially when dietary guidelines for Americans recommend lower calorie options such as water or non-sugar sweetened beverages to reduce overall sugar consumptions. What do you say, my dears? Do you follow these recommendations? What kind of drink you prefer the most? I have to admit I am team water in 90% of the times as I am a sweater as you've probably figured out by now. Oh, she's not sweating, she's glowing! Let's dig further and look at the direct data on diet soda and weight loss. In 2012, an expert review conducted by the American Heart Association and American Diabetes Association concluded that non-sugar sweeteners, when used in moderation, may help reduce added sugars and calorie intake, aiding in achieving and maintaining a healthy body weight. Similarly, the American Diabetes Association 2013 Position Statement and 2018 Medical Care Standards noted that substituting non-sugar sweeteners for caloric ones can lower overall calorie and carbohydrate intake and even help manage blood glucose level in people with diabetes. The Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics also reviewed the literature in 2012 finding that non-sugar sweeteners can help limit carbohydrate and energy intake when substituted for sugar sweeteners, supporting strategies for managing blood glucose or weight. But before you stock up on diet soda, let's address a key concern. While replacing added sugars with low and no calorie sweeteners can reduce calorie intake in the short term, what about their effectiveness for long-term weight management? Ah. Fortunately, we have data on that too. Science saves the day. A 52-week randomized control trials by Peters and colleagues at the University of Colorado compared non-sugar diet beverages and water. The study found that diet beverages were superior to water for weight loss and better weight maintenance throughout the year-long trial. Researchers concluded that non-sugar beverages can be effective for weight loss and maintenance within a weight management program. Similarly, a study by Harold and colleagues, which replicates Peter's trial, found statistically greater weight loss with non-sugar sweetened beverages compared to water, although the difference was less than 2 kilograms and not clinically significant. Science! A lot of science! Older trials have also shown that non-sugar sweeteners can assist with maintaining weight loss. One trial found that individuals with obesity lost more weight and maintained their loss during a two-year program when consuming non-sugar sweetened food and beverages compared to those who did not. Another six-month trial showed significant reduction in weight, waist circumference, and systolic blood pressure in overweight and obese adults who substituted sugar-sweetened beverages with non-sugar-sweetened beverages or water with greater weight reductions observed with non-sugar-sweetened beverages. She's a woman of science. Additionally, a systematic review and meta-analysis by McGlynn and colleagues found that low and no-calorie sweetened beverages as a replacement for sugar-sweetened beverages were associated with small improvements in body weight without evidence of harm and show benefits similar to water substitution. These findings illustrate that while diet soda is not a health-promoting drink, it can be a useful tool for weight loss and maintenance when used as a part of comprehensive weight management program. Sounds good, right? Yes! I knew science was real! I am wondering, what kind of diet soda is most popular in your country? Now for the practical takeaways. 
Water will always be the champion for hydration and I encourage you to drink it in all its forms. Plain, sparkling, with a slice of fruit, hot or cold. But for those who consume at least one sugary drink every day, switching to a calorie and sugar-free beverages can create a calorie deficit that may help with weight loss. Replacing just one can of regular soda with a diet version each day can save around 150 calories. Well, diet soda isn't a health-promoting drink, if it helps you achieve weight loss, the benefits may outweigh any hypothetical negatives of non-sugar sweeteners. Many people use diet drinks to transition of sugar-loaded beverages before making the leap to water, which can be a beneficial strategy for those accustomed to sweet drinks. So start small by replacing one sugary drink a day with a diet version. I think I'd enjoy a nice diet soda now, Louise. Experiment with adding a slice of lemon or a splash of juice to sparkling water for a refreshing low-calorie alternative. Also remember to keep water or low-calorie beverage accessible to reduce the temptation of sugary drinks. Be mindful of the ingredients and calorie content of your beverages by reading labels to make informed choices. And yes, you can enjoy diet drinks in moderation as a part of an overall balanced diet. And there you have it, my dears. We've explored the science and it's looking positive. But don't get lost in it. That's some dry, emotionless science. At the end of the day, many of us reach for a diet soda to cut calories and curb cravings. Though we can predict the future, I can see a brighter future. Shorter term trials show diet soda can help with cutting calories and curbing cravings. So, let's allow the science to continue its debate while we pop a can and toast to making informed choices and enjoy our diet drinks in moderation. Na zdravje and see you next time. Bye!